Hello, my name is Nicolaas, and today I want to show you how to set up and play a game of Mycelia. Mycelia is a game for one to four players. It's a deck building game for ages nine and up, and it plays in about 45 minutes. It's published by Ravensburger. In Mycelia, each player is in charge of a little part of the forest. That forest is filled with dewdrops. It is our job to bring those dewdrops to the shrine of the goddess. The first player who completely empties his board of dewdrops is the winner of the game. So let's take a look how we set up and play Mycelia. At the start of the game, all players get a game board, action tokens, and a deck of starting cards. This starter deck has a symbol in the top right corner and consists of six cards. These are identical for all players. When you're ready to start, you will shuffle these six cards, you draw three and you place them in front of you. These will be the cards that you will play on your turn. The rest of the deck you place to the left side of your game board. In the center of the table you can create a display of five hero cards and you can place the shrine, do tokens and leave tokens next to it. We now fill our board with 20 drops. We use a setup card to do this, because this setup has to be the same for all players. Here you can see a portal space, which you can also find on this card. This helps you to put the drops in the right space. After this is done, you are ready to play. On your turn, you will be playing cards, hiring new heroes and take extra actions. Before I explain all the actions, we should first take a closer look at our player board. On the player board, you can see these square spaces and they all have a different type of background. You have leaves, moss, soil, water, and then of course the portal. The idea of the game is that we will be moving and removing these drops from our board and we move them to the shrine. And the player who does this the quickest, who is the first to remove all drops from his board, is the winner of the game. First thing we can do with cards is moving drops on our board. Now, let's take a closer look at one of those cards that allows us to do this. This is one of the starting cards. If you look closely at this card, it will show you a blue drop, arrows and a type of background. Whenever you see a blue drop, it means that on that spot there must be at least that amount of drops. If there are more drops on that spot, that's no problem, but there must be at least one. So, if we look at this card, it lets us move one drop on the space, the green space. So, I could move this drop one space in one of the four directions, or I could move one of these two drops also in this direction or this direction. With this card, I could move this drop one space. So I will move it up towards the portal. This means I can take it off my board and I will be able to put the drop on the shrine at the end of my turn. So if we now take a closer look at one of the actions that I can take once in my turn, you will see that it also has this movement space. But if we compare it, it shows no color in the background. So this would mean when you have a symbol like this, I can move any blue drop from any space. If we take a look at one of the hero cards that we can buy, you will also see that there is no color in the background. So again, I can move or remove from any spot. But here it shows two drops. These two drops mean that there must be their blue. So there must be at least two drops on that space and then I can move any of these two drops. So there also may be more. So I could move, there are three drops here, that's okay. So I could move one of these three drops or I could move any of these two drops. That's also possible. When you see this symbol, it means you can take both actions. A special symbol is the one you have here. It's a beetle. It shows you an exclamation mark and it means you have to watch out because this is something special. I told you that when there's two drops here, there may also be more drops. 
but this beetle symbol means that there must be that exact amount of drops on the space you want to take the action in. So here, if we look at this symbol, it shows you one drop I can move. So I can only move from a space where there is one drop, like here or here. I could not move a drop from this space. Now that we've seen what happens when we look at a symbol with blue drops, you will notice that other hero cards also have drops that are transparent. Let's take a closer look at this hero. This shows us that we can take an action in any square because it has no color. There must be at least two drops, like in this case or this case, and then the transparent drops mean that if there are more drops, you can also remove them, but they don't have to be there. So with this, I could remove these two drops, but of course it would be better to take this square because it has three drops and I can remove three drops. This symbol means that this is not an action we may take. So we get to remove up to four drops, but all the other players can remove one. There's two more symbols that we should take a look at. It's the one you have here on this hero card. It shows you a number and a multiplier sign. So it simply means I get to move three drops from a space. So I can target any space that has one drop, at least one drop on it. So I could move this one over here. Uh, maybe move this one a little bit closer and move this one over here. So I can do that. I could even move one drop three times. That's also possible. And then all other players get to move another drop from their board. So again, this is for me. And this symbol shows that other players also get to take an action. Another very important symbol is the one you see here. And it's a leaf token with a number. Every time you see a token like this with a plus sign, you can take a leaf token that has that value and place it in your play area. You will use leaf tokens to hire heroes from the center of the table. This way you can make your deck unique because other players will buy other cards and it will help you to get better actions into your deck. When you buy a card, so this card costs three, I have three leaf tokens. If I buy this card, I will not put it in the discard pile, but I put it face down on top of my draw deck. So this means that when I buy a card from the center of the table, I know I will draw it on my next turn. So this way you can plan ahead a little bit to get that card that you want and maybe prepare on the board for what you have there. So if we take a look now at the two actions that are here underneath our board, these are actions that also cost you leaf tokens and that, can, that you can use once in a turn. To use it, you pay the cost that's here, and then you flip this token to show that you used it this turn. At the end of your turn, you can flip it back over and you can use it again on another turn. A complete turn would look something like this. So for my first card, I could play this one. It shows a drop on a green background. So there must be at least one drop on that space. Maybe I would move this one. This would help me to get it off the board. So I now place it next to my player board. And then at the end of my turn, I will place it on the portal. With this card, I can move a drop on a water background. So I will move this one here and I'll show you why in a moment. And then lastly, I can use this card to get two leaf tokens. And all other players get one leaf token also. I now have seven leaf tokens. I could use them to take one of these actions, but I would rather recruit a hero from the center of the table. I have this hero here. He costs seven, so I will now pay the seven leaf tokens. I really want this card because I've just moved a drop from a blue background over here. So if you look now, I will have four drops on this space and this card will allow me to remove these four drops to put them on the shrine. Like I told you before, a card that you hire from the center row will be put face down on top of your draw deck. So at the end of my turn, this will be the first card who gets into my hand 
and I will be able to use it on my next turn to remove these drops. Now at the end of my turn, I will first refill the row with the heroes. So now we uh, have five again. This is my discard pile, so this stays here. And then I will look, I have removed this drop from my board, so I place it in the first space that's open on this shrine. I would now look at the shrine. It's not full, so nothing happens. A shrine is full when we're playing in a two-player game, when this is completely filled with uh, drops and with the die, of course. For a three-player game, we will fill the shrine up to here, and for a four-player game, we would fill it up to here. But now we're playing two player games, so this stays here and it's not full. The final thing we do on our turn is to draw three cards. Remember, I already know this one. Place them nearby and these will be the cards we will use for our next turn. The other player took his turn, so it's now my turn again. I have these three cards, so the first one I would use to get another leaf token. This would help me to take actions or to buy new heroes. Then I would use this card. I can move a drop from a red space. There should be at least one, but I will take this space because this lets me move it over here into the portal. And that way I will be able to remove it from my board. And lastly, we have the card that we bought on the last turn. It lets me remove four drops from any space because there's no color in the background. There should be at least two because there are two blue drops. And if there are more, like in this case, I can remove all four of them. So this helps me to remove these four drops from the board. And don't forget, I can do two actions when it has this symbol, but this means that this is for the other player. So the other player would now remove one drop from his board. I still have one leaf token. That's not enough to hire a hero from the center of the table. But I could use it to take this action. I would pay the one cost that it has on the corner. And then I take the action. In this case, it means I can discard all cards from the display and I will then replace them with five new cards. But now I have to turn this token, so I'm not able to use it again until the next turn. Now I put the tokens, the drop tokens, onto the shrine. And it's almost full. At the end of my turn, I draw three cards, but there's only one. So now I would shuffle my discard pile. Like this. I already have one, so I draw two more. And then I'm ready for my next turn. If at the end of the turn you place the drops on the shrine and you fill it completely up until where the die is, something special will happen. Any leftover drops will be removed from the game. And now we turn this dial one time into a clockwise direction and we see what happens. Let's now take a look at this supply card. It shows us a smaller version of our game board. You can see the portal that's also here on our board. And it shows all these symbols. If you look at the die, it has this leaf or flower symbol. And we can see it two times on our card. This would now mean that each player takes two drops from the supply and places them in these spots. So we would add one here and the other one on the water space. When all players have added those drops to their board, any remaining drops will be discarded from the game. Now we will flip this card to the other side, so it shows the same symbols but in another configuration. Now we move the dial back into its starting position and we place the die here for a two-player game. And the next time when the shrine is full, we will do this again using this side of the card. When a player removed the last drops from his board, play continues until all players had an equal number of turns. 
And if he's still the only player who has an empty board, he's the winner of the game. In case of a tie, we will look at the amount of leaf tokens each player has next to him. The player with the highest amount is then the winner of the game. When you take a look at the cards in your game box, you will see that some have a symbol in the bottom right corner. That's because they're part of an expansion that you can use with your game. If you want, you just shuffle these right in with the base game heroes. Some cards will show this lightning symbol. It means that they have a one-time effect only the moment when you buy them from the central row. So when I buy this card showing this E symbol, this lets me place a new action tile underneath my board. This is a symbol that lets me discard cards. Another one we have, it's this one, for instance. The moment I buy this card, all other players can remove one drop from their board. And now my favorite is this one. It shows you the beetle symbol, so I have to look on my board for a spot where there's only one drop, so maybe this one here. And then I can place a portal in its space. So I remove this drop and then I place this portal on this spot. So now I have an extra place where I can remove drops from my board to the shrine. Now you are ready to play Mycelia. If you like this video, you can subscribe and like, or you can follow MeepleCare on Instagram, YouTube or Facebook. This was MeepleCare, taking care of your Meeple needs.